Hello, I'm Carol Talbot, the creator and founder of The Possibility Hub. Now asked by a tribe to be a sacred pipe carrier, in this episode, John Paul Fitchback shares what that honor really means and how he conducts ceremonies with a sacred pipe. Hello, John Paul. We are talking about the fact that you are a sacred pipe carrier today. And I'm curious to know what that means and how it came about. So in Native North American traditions, uh, pipe, the sacred pipe is, a, is one of our biggest legends and our biggest stories. And there are different kinds of sacred pipes that you carry. So this is a smoking pipe, not a playing, not a, a do-do-do pipe. It's a sacred pipe that you smoke. And so there's two kinds of pipe carriers. There's a personal pipe, which just is a pipe that you use for your own personal prayer. But then there's a sacred pipe carrier, which means that the, a tribe or a people or a community have asked you to be a pipe carrier for them. So that means that you're willing to hold this pipe for a particular ceremony for, for others. And once you accept that, you accept that for life, unless something extraordinary happens, in which case, if that should happen, then you return the pipe to someone else. So once the pipe is made and consecrated, it's a living being. So you have to give it to someone else. It has to go up, you know, up for adoption and <laughs> you find a new home for it if you have a change in your life that you can't keep it for whatever reason. So for me, um, somewhere along the, uh, the, the initiation years, Grey Wolf asked me to carry the sacred pipe for, their, for that community. So I agreed. And at the point that you agree, then you have to be gifted all the elements to make the pipe. You have to make the pipe yourself. Ah. So in my tradition, you can't be given one. You have to make it because it's your act of creation. So you have to, someone has to give you the pipe stone to carve the pipe yourself. You have to have the vision for the, the bowl and you carve it yourself. And the stem, the wooden part, stem, I'll show you all these bits and pieces. Um, the wooden stem, you have to, find a tree that has been felled by lightning and ask the tree for one of its branches. And then you take that branch and then you, you um, carve the stem and then very slowly burn your way through the stem to make the passage for the smoke. So then when I, somewhere again along those years, I was traveling with uh, Chaban Lone Wolf, who's a Kiowa, and he took me back to the Kiowa people on their reservation. And after the ghost dance, they asked me if I would carry a sacred pipe for them. So I said, yes, sure. So I, I'm a double whammy <laughs> sacred pipe carrier. Not one, but two. <laughs> yeah. So it's the same pipe, but for both traditions. Uh, the other thing that happens to you is that in the old days, you had to have a way that secret is this, all this was illegal, right? So for most of the grandmothers and grandfathers who ask you to do this, they remember a time when all these ceremonies were illegal. So you had to have a discreet way of letting people know that you were the pipe carrier, because if they needed healing or they had a ceremony or they needed to honor something, you would ask a pipe carrier to come and, and, take the, and uh, do the pipe ceremony for that honoring or that healing. So you had to have a discreet way to know. So the discreet way to know is that you wore a ring in the color of the direction that corresponds with the time of the year. So you'll notice that I'm wearing a yellow ring. Yes. Because in the Southern hemisphere, we're in the spring, which is yellow, but you have other ones. There's a black one, red, a white one, and a red one. So you have all the rings. So for you know, 34 years, I've had to keep shopping for these stone rings. Because if you have a metal ring and you go into a sweat lodge, it'll burn you because it yes, just gets so yes. hot. So because I use the rings for ceremony as well as pipe ceremonies, I've always tried to find stone rings. And occasionally you can find a wooden one, but they don't last very long. And that's how traditionally people would know that you're a pipe carrier. So what sort of, you said they're used for specific ceremonies. Um, Give us an idea of how a ceremony would run, because 
is is like holding the pipe a little bit like the talking stick it goes round everybody in the circle or it just a little bit you. It, it's a little bit so why don't i why don't i take it out and do it i'll do a show and tell oh yes please and and how on earth did you find a tree that had been struck by lightning or is that one of those things that when you've been tasked to do something like that or to find something like that it naturally comes to you because it wouldn't be in your awareness if you hadn't been told about it. Yeah. So um, for me, the tree had to be an aspen. So in vision, it was the aspen tree um, because uh, an aspen is an entire organism that can be the size of a whole mountainside. So it's not just a single, in a single individual. They're a whole networked community. So it's an incredibly special tree. So for me, it's all about that community and that sense of of togetherness and multiple people all having one purpose so i knew that it had to be aspen so you just head out in the aspen grove and pretty soon you come across one that's been struck by lightning you can really tell and <laughs> away you go so it's a it has a bag that it lives in so because i'm in australia i rebuilt the bag so this is a kangaroo tail that flips over the bag and so then it's very soft on the inside. So there's kangaroo fur and lining and it's all very soft. So one half of it. And I should make, make, maybe uh, make clear here. This isn't some cruel, oh, there's a kangaroo. Let me get the tail. Everything's no. done with reverence to the animal and the gift that it gives. Yes. So I have, you know, lots of Aboriginal connections here. So I asked when I wanted to rebuild the bag, um, for being living now in Australia, I asked and said, does anyone have a kangaroo that's been, you know, killed in the appropriate ways? And so that's how I got this, this kangaroo. So it holds the pipe stem, which you wrap in cloth. And then in the other end, you have the pipe stem, which is wrapped. So this pipe stem is wrapped in buffalo. Right. Then you have your smoking mixture in a special pouch. And then you have whatever else is part of your ceremony. So for me, I have a particular crystal that's important and has always been part of my ceremonies. So that lives in the bag. Um, so let's start with the pipe stem. So the pipe stem has two ties on it. And in my, for me, um, this buffalo tie was what was wrapped around my wrists when I did the ghost dance for the Kiowa. And this red wool was what was wrapped around my wrist for the sun dance. So those are the ties. Then it's a piece of purple silk. Purple always works for me. I love purple. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I'm now wondering about the ghost dance and the sun dance. <laughs> There's another discussion. I'm, another topic. So inside the bundle of the pipe stem is sage. And this is the, this is the prairie sage that grows, you know, just single tall sage. And the pipe stem lays in that because the pipe stem represents the masculine. Right. And since men have a problem with keeping things clear and clean and not confusing desire for ceremony or you know that we have difficulty let's just say <laughs> so it's wrapped in sage so you always wrap it in sage so that it stays clear and clean so that as the pipe bundle travels around or as if you have different thoughts you know that doesn't affect the pipe stem so that's the pipe stem it's carved and and that's just um a burn mark from a ceremony I set it down you across. Carved, you carved that yourself. Yeah. And they gave you instructions as well on how to carve it. Well, by that time, I had been a part of so many pipe ceremonies. I've okay. held so many pipes that you just kind of, you just knew how to do it. So, and then you very slowly, you burn through. Wow. And so that makes the stem. And the, so the stem represents all the organic things as well as the masculine. And then 
you've got a the pipe bowl. So that's out of pipe stone. So you have a particular vision for that. That's beautiful. When you carve it. So you carve that and you hollow it out and you make all the parts of that. And so that's the bowl. So the bowl represents the feminine and also the inorganic parts of the world. So then um, I won't do it now, but you join the masculine and the feminine together. And right. when you pull those together, you're also connecting above and below. You're connecting organic to inorganic. So it's this sacred union. So it's much more than just masculine and feminine when you do this sacred union. So everything so I guess, has a meaning. Um, the, the wood, the way it's carved, uh, one's masculine, one's feminine, the way they come together. Everything is honored in this shamanic tradition. Every yeah. single thing from um, the animal, the land, the wood, the objects, every single thing. Yeah, yeah. So yes, everything has a, has a purpose and a message and a teaching behind it all. So that's the two, the two parts of the pipe. Then there are different kinds of pipes. So I'll unwrap a different one. So this pipe is a women's pipe. It's a very, very rare pipe. For so many years, all and, the and pipe carriers- you make this one as well? No, I didn't. So I'm, I'm a man, so I didn't make this pipe. Um, and I'll just be very gentle as I, as I hold it. But it's a women's pipe. Yes. So it's completely different and I'll show you how it's different. So uh, White, um, White Bear carved this pipe and then she had a, a big change in everything about her life. So she gave the pipe to me and said, would you please look after this pipe? It's not appropriate for me at this particular time. So you'll see yes, quite perfect. different how it connects. So instead of it going inserting in the feminine piece goes into that. Yes, very different. Right. So um, different wood, and I apologize, I don't remember what, what, what wood this is. I have it written down in the journal, um, but that's a, a women's pipe. So I'm holding on to that pipe, and I'll pass it along someday. But just to know that there are different ones. And if, you're, if it's a personal pipe, then those look very different as well. So this pipe has been used in oh, hundreds of ceremonies, probably. So, so in my... I was going to say, so how do you use it in the ceremony? So for me, it was a new moon pipe. So in understanding different ceremonies, I uh, was taught a, a lot about the new moon and that the ceremony that's appropriate to gather people together is the beginning of the cycle. So when we start a new cycle, it's important to gather the people together for prayer and ceremony to honor that next cycle. So this pipe became a new moon pipe, which fit with both cultures that I carry, the, both tribes that I carry the pipe for. So every new moon, which we just had two days ago, Saturday, a couple days ago, um, I gather people together and sometimes it's a small group, sometimes it's just me, sometimes it's a large group. So we had about 60 people. I think for the pipe ceremony, we had about 50. All gathered together to share the ceremony of the new moon. So that ceremony um, will change according to the year. So I have four different shirts that I wear for pipe ceremonies. So they're just right there. So depending on the time of the year, you've got the ring and you've got the colored shirt that connects all that. And what you do, there's a bit of homework. You look back at the last month and you look at new people that entered your life and people that exited your life. So there might be people that have died or people that, you know, things have changed. So you look at entries and exits of people in your life and you think about why they have come, for what purpose have they come and what's completed so that they could go. And you make take stock of that. And then you look at experiences that have happened across the last month. 
And what you're after are trying to figure out what the lesson was. If this experience happened for me last month, there was a lesson there. So you kind of look at, well, what are the highlights of the month? What are things that I, you know, happened that month? And then you, you ask your higher self, so in, for what purpose did that happen? So you come down to try to understand what these lessons were. And then you, in the ceremony, you give thanks for the opportunity to learn that lesson. Doesn't mean you succeed, but you thanks for the opportunity to learn that lesson. And that helps. Now that's beautiful because most people wait to the end of the year. I've just done a blog for, for our newsletter, you know, and said, you know, the end of the year is often a time of reflection. And, you know, even in organizations, it tends to be, you know, the end of year or annual review time. And yet in your tradition, it's like, and we talked about this in one of the other interviews that there's, there's, um, there should be more opportunity for ceremony and celebration. There should be more time for reflection. And what a lovely way to think about who has come into your life or what opportunities have come into your life in a month in a moon cycle and what's leaving or what's left. And, yeah. you know, that keeps everything in motion, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, it's understanding that on another cycle is starting. I've got a chance again. So if there's a lesson that, you know, you, you go, well, that was the lesson and I failed, or I didn't really get that, or I really succeeded at that one. It's really important to honor that. So that when you come to the next month, you're like, don't need to do that one again, or, okay, I'll be on the lookout for that one again. That's so although we're lesson. constantly learning, growing, evolving, this brings in an awareness of that learning, growing and evolving, rather than, you know, looking back over the years and thinking, gosh, I've changed. Being more <laughs> aware of, that, of it happening as it happens. Yeah. Um, which yep. means that you have more control over, you know, what you want to invite in and what you don't want to invite in. Yep. Now, and then you what, look for... I was going to say, what, are you burning the pipe? Do people actually smoke the pipe? Does it go so, round or is it just you? Uh, no, well, it depends. Um, no one that has had alcohol can touch this pipe or, or draw from this pipe. And... I have, that has been tested. I was in a circle and a beautiful, beautiful spiritual person that I adore had had a couple of glasses of wine and came into the circle and the pipe went to her and then it was clogged immediately. And that was it. Ceremony over. Yeah. That, so, so again, that teaches you that and, and it's funny you say that because I've experienced when I'm holding space for say a cambo ceremony, if people disrespect the, the medicine, if people disrespect uh, cambo, I can honestly tell you, John Paul, it bites them in the bum. <laughs> I've, I've, I've got some hilarious stories that I can share another time. I've seen it again yeah. and again and again that people come and they haven't read the information or they're in a rush and and, it uh, it knows that it knows that if you dis hold disrespect during ceremonies or for anything like this, it's like mm -mm. yep. And then another time, I've said to everyone, you know, I've sent out that if you're coming to the ceremony, you can't have alcohol. We'll have we'll have drinks after, but not before, please. And everyone and I assumed everyone behaved. And we went around and we're, you know, we're going around the circle and suddenly the pipe doesn't, it's clogged. And I said, okay, the only reason this happens is that someone is at alcohol. So mess up. And someone said, well, I just had a beer. I'm like, well, that's all it takes. So it's just incredible how it is about that, you know, being really clean in your approach to this. So the, then, so it is the smoking mixture that I have. I don't think this is going to work very well on camera. Yeah, not really. Um, so it has every pipe carry would have a different smoking mixture. So for me, it's a, it's tobacco that I actually grow myself um, and harvest. And then I have um, 
a little plant that's called uva ursi. Um, it's called kinikinik, which is also just a word that means smoking mixture. Uh, and then red, uh, red willow bark is what are the ingredients of my smoking mixture. And then you pack the pipe with prayers. And depending upon you know, your, in, your guidance and your intuition in the time of the year, um, the, you start with prayers for all of creation. So I typically start with loading the pipe with prayers for the stone people, prayers for the plant, plant people, prayers for all those that crawl upon the earth, whether they slither on their bellies or they walk on their legs or they walk on six legs or eight legs or a million legs, anything that crawls. Then we do the swimmers, then we do the flyers. Um, then we do our human family, and then we do ancestors that have passed. And then you go around and every person has asked, been asked to think of what they need for the next month. So you're asked to think of four things that you need for the next month. So mental, emotional, spiritual, physical. And so then that each person asks for those things and we load that in the pipe. So we've done our ceremony, we've called in the directions, all that's been done. Um, then the pipe has been loaded with the intention so that when you smoke the pipe, you don't breathe in because you're not creator. What the hell are you gonna do with those prayers? So you just use your lungs as bellows. So you just draw and release, draw and release, draw and release, draw and release. And when you're holding the pipe and smoking, you're being of service to the rest of the group because you're just creating a bunch of smoke. That's your job. And while the smoke is being created, they can add their prayers and their intentions and their love and their gratitude into that. Because the idea is that the smoke disperses. So it sends the prayer into the smoke so that then it spreads everywhere. So that's the idea of it, that when the pipe comes to you, your job is just to make as much smoke as you can for everybody else. It's not your special time to have your special moment. It's now you are of service to the rest of the community. Make a, make a lot of smoke. Oh, I think I can do that. I'm always um, on, on those kind of ceremonies when you have to, um, I don't smoke and I have a big problem sort of, you know, when you, you have to take things like that and inhale it, it's just not for me. So it's kind of like, that's about it. So making yeah. smoke is fine. <laughs> I can go yeah. with that. Yeah, you just make smoke, you don't inhale it. And I love, I love the, the comment that, I think it was great, one of Grey Wolf's comments that he said, after, you know, this is the smoke and this is how it works and blah, blah. And he said, so there would be no, unless your creator, don't inhale. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and allowing the smoke to take your, um, you know, vision, uh, your, your request up. Because again, smoke is movement, like, like the fire, you know, it has many different levels from the flame to the coals and to the smoke and taking it up. So the smoke becomes all of everything. Yep, 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 yep. So then various things happen with the ash, depending on how, depending on how much ash you have. Um, various cultures have traditions about the ash that the pipe carrier must dump, dump the ash into their hands and must, you know, clean themselves with that ash because they've led the ceremony. So you're saying, you know, I cleanse myself and complete the ceremony by using up the ash. Other times the ash gets put in the fire that you've got going. So there are different, different things that happen with the ash. And then it all gets packed away. So because we've had it out, and you know, here we've been on the international interwebs, what I thought we would do is we would cleanse it all to put it all away. So you would do this, when you took it out, you would cleanse everything because you would just run it through the, the smoke just to make sure that it's been cleansed. So we didn't do that when we took it out because we weren't going into ceremony, but because we've had it all out, I think, well, let's run it through a bit of nice um, sage just to make sure everything's nice and clean. So we'll pack it all away. So I suppose the other thing to share is the story of white buffalo calf woman, yeah? Oh, uh, totally. So, uh, white buffalo calf woman is the spiritual being that brought the pipe to the people. So it's a Lakota story. Um, many, many, many North American tribes 
have adopted that story. So the, the Lakota people have shared her as a spiritual teacher with lots of Turtle Island, which is what North America is referred to. So the story goes that two braves were out hunting and it was a terrible time for the native people because there were no buffalo to eat. So they were starving. They were, and they were so weak that they couldn't even travel or pack things up to travel. So it was a very horrible time for them. So the two scouts went out looking for buffalo and found nothing. And they came back to their camp for the night. And across the hill from the east came this woman and she was dressed in white buckskin. And she was this beautiful young maiden. So the two, uh, the two braves, one of them had a uh, lustful desire when he saw her and said, oh, I'll think I'll take her as a, as a wife. And the other brave said, no, no, she's a spiritual being. That's, you can't do that. So uh, he tried to hold the lustful one back, but the lustful one charged out toward her. And she just looked very peacefully at him and turned him to a pile of dust and bones. <laughs> so <laughs> the other brave said, okay, right, I'm paying attention. What is it? So uh, she said, go back and tell your people to build an altar and uh, to, the, to the, you know, build a sacred altar and build a teepee for a teaching lodge. And I'll come back tomorrow at sunset. So he went back to the people and they did that. They um, built the, the teepee and the altar. And sure enough, at sunset, she comes and she's got this bundle in her hand. And she hands them this bundle and says, um, this is a tool for you to be able to live in peace and harmony. And this is a tool so that you can live in balance with nature. And this is a tool so that you can understand and I can teach you about the four directions. So she said, um, I'll be back. I'm going to come back for, for four days. And so she, as she went across the hill, she bent down and she rolled over and she turned into a buffalo and, and went away. So for the next four days, she came to them and each time is a different color buffalo. And she taught them and she gave them the ceremony of the sweat lodge and she gave them the ceremony of the vision quest and she gave them the medicine wheel and she gave them the sacred pipe and said, this is the tool that you will have so that you can always speak to creator and you can pray for healings and ask for what you need. And then she left them. And that all happened around Devil's Tower in Wyoming. And it was like, you know, it might be now 20 generations ago that this happened to the people. And isn't it beautiful how they've continued to pass those stories and those teachings down the ancestral line? Um, and this is where, you know, one of the regrets I have is that I didn't speak to my grandmother about her grandparents. Um, you know, so when I speak to my mother, and we can only go back so many generations of what she knows, because as she said, in those days, in you know, the Western world, it's not so normal. People didn't share the way that the indigenous people um, share, the tribes share. So it's beautiful that we now have access to that wisdom from so many generations ago. And I thank oh, yeah. you for, for sharing this beautiful pipe ceremony uh, with us and, and how it works and maybe inspire people to, again, be more in ceremony and the value of ceremony and creating you know, their own tools for, that are symbolic for their own ceremonies. There aren't enough of us pipe carriers around. So please, you know, one of the most beautiful teachings from Grey Wolf about carrying a pipe was he said, you know, Eagle Heart, you're not a pipe carrier until you can conduct a full pipe ceremony in a prison cell with no pipe. So I take it you, that happened. <laughs> no, I haven't been in a prison cell, but you know, it was that beautiful point about saying, when, when everything has been taken from you, when supposedly every single thing has been taken from you, can you still conduct this ceremony? I've 
I've done pipe ceremonies with no pipe, and I've done sweat lodge with no lodge. Um, and it is, it's about saying, it's not the necessarily the tool. The tool is beautiful. And it's a beautiful way to honor and it, you know, it confirms things. And, you know, I have no, I have no regrets about carrying this, but, you know, for others, if the new moon ceremony makes sense to you, then burn something, burn anything, light a candle, burn some incense. Beautiful. Again, another session that reinforces how powerful ceremony and celebration can be. Thank you so much, John Paul. My pleasure.